What's up guys? If you're ready to take your 3D prints up the next level, stick around. I'm going to show you how to make a graphite paint where we take your boring 3D prints and turn them into something like this. I think you guys will enjoy this one. And if you like this, check out the next video where we talk about making an electroforming solution, all leading up to the grand finale where we actually build a working com badge. Hey, subscribe if you want to check that out. I wanted to take a second and kind of share some information I've learned along the way. Uh, this video specifically is going to be about how to make your own graphite paint for electroplating 3D prints. The process is super simple. However, in my kind of year-long adventure into electroplating 3D prints, um, I've learned quite a bit. When I first started, I looked all over YouTube, all over the internet to kind of find some resources to make some good graphite paint, and there is a lot out there. However, None of them really address making a graphite paint that is compatible with an airbrush. A few of them touch on the topic, but none of them address it specifically. So that's what this video here is today. You can obviously take this information and use it to make a regular graphite paint that you would apply with a paintbrush or that you could dip your, dip your item in. Um, it's good information for that as well. But I wanted to specifically touch on the solution um, that I found that worked best um, to make a graphite paint to go through an airbrush. So sit back, enjoy. Hopefully you learn a few things. Hopefully this helps you out on whatever you're trying to plate. In your work. All right, let's take a second to talk about our graphite because that's uh, pretty much the part of this whole thing that makes it work. There's a lot of types of graphite out there um, and they are not created the same. So the first thing I tried just because I wanted to try it that day, I'm super impatient, was just some of the, the graphite that you can buy at your local hardware stores. And these are graphite lubricant for locks and things, um, hinges, help stuff move more freely. The problem with these is, is they contain a lot of silicates, mineral ash, quartz, in addition to the graphite. And so if you think of an electrical current trying to pass through the graphite paint, anytime it hits one of these things uh, like mineral ash or quartz, it's not as conductive as graphite, you get poor surface coverage in that area. And so I found that when you buy these, you can get plating results. It's gonna leave a poor taste in your mouth when you try electroplating. So try not to start with something like this as if it's all you got, it can work. But you're gonna to have to be extremely diligent in putting a few coats of paint on to make something like this work. A better material would be to try to find pure graphite powder. And so it doesn't have the additives in it that some of your graphite that you'll buy in stores will. And so, 100% recommend getting a pure graphite powder versus something that's got something mixed in with it. Safety warning though, both of these are very hard on your lungs. So anytime you have these open, there's a lot of very fine dust particles. You can't even see them most of the time. So please, please, please wear a respirator. You can redo platings as many times as you want, but you've only got one set of lungs. Keep yourself safe. All right, next thing I wanna to talk to you about is the paint or ink or dye that you're gonna to use to have your graphite stick to the object that you're trying to plate. Again, these are just some of the items I've tried and I'll kind of tell you why I've settled on what I've settled on and the pros and cons of each. And you can kind of make your own decision, but I think at least as far as for airbrush, it's a pretty clear winner here. Um, first thing I tried just because it was cheap, readily available, and I have a ton of them around the house for my kids, is just some of the dollar acrylic paints that you can pick up at any local store. You know, I did get these to plate and mixing them with the graphite, it, it worked okay. The problem is it ends up leaving a pretty rough surface finish. You can try to thin it out with paint thinners and stuff. But again, that's, that's another step and it didn't work that well. I had splotchy plating surfaces. It didn't, it didn't coat real well. I just wasn't real happy with this. Um, so then I stepped it up to a, a acrylic primer um, that was made for an airbrush. Now this is a lot better quality. The pigment particles are a lot smaller and it'll go through an airbrush a lot better. Um, and so this worked okay. Um, but I still found that the surface finish quality wasn't ideal. And the same thing for um, both of these is that, and really even this one, this is just a, a, a water-based airbrush color. One, the surface quality wasn't great. And two, um, for whatever reason, when I submerge these in the electroplating solution, no matter how long I let them dry, they always seem to have a bubble that would form or a part of the 
the graphite paint that wouldn't stick very well. So you get these you get these minor bubbles under it that when you tried to sand them or polish them, that part would come off and it would leave, it would just ruin your whole plating. So I I was never able to get consistent results with these. Sure, one out of five would plate perfect. It would look good, but it, it wasn't consistent. And I wasn't real happy with the experience. And honestly, I was ready to walk away from it at that point. Uh, but then I started reading um, online about people using ink as their coating material for their graphite. And so I had printer ink on hand and this worked great. But, you know, I don't know a lot about the chemistry of inks. It coated great. It had a perfectly smooth surface. But the moment it came into contact with water, it ruined my electroplating solution, dyed the whole thing black. Uh, don't recommend that. So the next step was um, buying something called India ink. And when you mix the India ink and the graphite powder, it makes a very thin solution that will easily go through your airbrush and um, you'll achieve some very fine surface finishes. Here is a ring I practice on and even the very minor engraving details, um, the ink and the graphite was able to preserve which is really amazing as far as being able to accurately um, coat your surface without losing detail. Um, this is a superior combination. Um, this also does not, if, as long as you let it dry long enough, it will not ruin or taint your electroplating solution. So that's, that's a big plus. And I've had zero problems with surface adhesion um, using this combination. So there's no bubbles, there's no flaking, and it has a really good conductivity. So I'm getting really fast plating results. If you want to airbrush this combination here, any pure graphite powder and India ink um, have been by far the best combination I found to have really exceptional um, coverage when you're painting with a graphite paint. Um, so I'll go ahead and cut away to another camera. I'll show you how to mix this solution. It's very easy, very quick. All right, so let's get started. We'll talk about equipment real quick. Start with safety stuff. Glasses aren't an absolute must, but I like to wear them just in case. Um, respirator is an absolute must. Anytime you're messing with graphite powder, um, this stuff is nasty if you get it in your lungs. So yeah, just do yourself a favor. Pick up a little respirator. Um, you'll be glad you did. And gloves, you don't have to have them, but the ink that we're going to be using for this is absolutely horrific to try to get out of your nail beds and out of your skin if it gets in there. So again, pick up a nice pair of gloves. And it's a pretty simple process to um, make the graphite paint. They mix equal portions of graphite powder into your ink. If it's something I want to put on with a brush, I'll make it just a slight bit thicker. All right, so basically what you want to do is start with your graphite powder. Again, be wary of the dust. Um, all I use is a simple measuring cup. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. Um, and like I said, just eyeball it. I, I don't use very much of this, so we're going to make a pretty small amount. In fact, that's probably way too much. Very little. But again, make as much as you want. Go ahead and close your graphite powder. Last thing you want to do is spill it. All right, in the ink, super easy. You know, you can use any kind of device you want to stir it, something even as simple as a spoon. Um, most likely, if you're electroplating, you have one of these. It's a magnetic stir plate. Um, so what I like to do is drop that in there. And that will stir it up. Don't turn it on until after you've gotten some liquid in there. And we're going to start it up slow. And again, you can just get a nice mixture. Shake it well. Um, as you can see, it's a it's a fairly thin mixture. Um, doesn't have to be super thick to get good coverage with the graphite. Um, the India ink, however, it, it 
interacts with the graphite. It seems to provide pretty good electrical continuity. So this is the bottle I use personally for my, my airbrush. And um, one of the tricks I've learned is I put one of my magnetic stirring deals inside of there. Um, and before I use it, I always let it sit on the stir for a minute. All right, here's an example of how well the graphite paint can actually flow through an airbrush. It goes on very smoothly with very minimal splatter um, due to how thin um, the graphite paint is. You can actually use the airbrush's uh, air only feature and dry the graphite paint to get it ready for plating a lot quicker. Make it safer to handle as well. Uh, once submerged in the plating solution, I'm showing you a three minute clip fast forwarded here just to show you how fast these parts can actually take plating with this graphite solution. Compared to other graphite paint mixtures, the speed at which this begins plating is absolutely incredible. The next clip shows the same item after a few hours in the plating solution. As you can see, there's no surface adhesion issues with this graphite paint. The surface of this item is extremely smooth with no bubbles or plating gaps. From this point, it's very simple to take this item and buff it to a mirrored finish using a polishing wheel or fine aggressive sandpaper. All right, check it out next week when I post a video talking about the plating solution I've come up with that works well for me to plate 3D printed objects. And the week following that, we'll go ahead and get the big build project where we go ahead and build a working Star Trek communicator. So live long and prosper, guys. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you guys learned something from this. Um, Keep creativity going. Let's build some stuff together. And I hope you have a good rest of your day. Thank you. All right. Well, I probably sound like Darth Vader now because I've got my respirator on. So, so in order to make an electric... <laughs> Fucking stupid fuck. All right. I am your father, Luke. Thank you for plating my electric... Uh... <laughs> stupid fucking fuck. Okay.